Arturia's Analog Lab comes with loads of preset sounds from their collection of software synthesizers. So together with Glover, it makes a very satisfying environment to experience the effect of using your movement to control sound. The fastest way to start using Analog Lab with Glover is to open one of our presets. Um, so let's open the preset browser by clicking on presets up here and then type in Analog Lab. So by the time you get these tutorials, um, I promise there will be loads more presets, but I'm still finishing right now. Um, so uh, here's a bunch of presets that are made for Analog Lab. Um, and I have Gliss open here, so I'm gonna choose one of these Gliss ones. I'm gonna go for pads, chords. And when I load this preset, you see that it also automatically opens Analog Lab for me. If this is the first time you're going to use Analog Lab with Glover, we have to make sure that Analog Lab sees Glover as a MIDI controller. Um, and you do that by going here, up here, and then go to Audio MIDI Settings. And then where it says MIDI settings, you'll see a list of all your connected MIDI devices and Glover is in that list too. And you just have to make sure it's ticked. So Analog Lab is ready to receive MIDI data from Glover. Analog Lab works with something that they call a MIDI configuration, um, which is the equivalent of MIDI mapping in Ableton Live. Um, and um, um, you can basically MIDI map to all of these uh, parameters at the bottom here and uh, also the, um, the moving through the presets that they have. They have loads and they're all, they all sound really great. Uh, the preset also loads the MIDI configuration in Analog Lab so you don't actually have to do anything um, we, in, in there anyway. Um, and we, all we need to do is to figure out how to use this scene in um, Glover. And um, so you can read what these mappings say, but there's also, um, as I can see that there is a, a description in this scene note. So I'm gonna open that and see what it says. So it says, uh, play chords with pads one to four. Um, all right, so I need to be on the pads page in Gliss and, um, and then just press these pads and then see what happens. Very quietly, I can hear it. Um, that might have something to do with the brightness of the sound. And it says here that I can control the brightness macro with the pitch of my phone. Let's also turn up the master a little bit, so a little bit better. So pads one to four control uh, chords, and then five, I can click five to stop all the chords. Um, so we can see that the pitch of my phone is controlling this first macro, that is um, the brightness. And then the roll controls the movement macro, which is this fourth one yet yeah, here. And the yaw controls the reverb. So when I press these buttons and make a roll movement. So if I have it rolled all the way with my screen facing to my left, you can hear that it's barely any movement. And then I add it. And then I yaw my way to the right. And it adds reverb to the sound. Um, so now I basically I have control over these parameters and I can play chords um, but not only on this sound the fun part is that I can now also use Glover um, to navigate through the list of presets that um, Analog Lab has and um, in this preset uh, we can use flick to the left to hear the previous preset and flick right to hear the next preset. Okay, 
so if I do a flick, which is kind of a sharp movement around the roll uh, axis, you see that it's loaded now the next preset, which is a bass. <laughs> Beauty harp. So you can see this is a really fun and easy fun and easy way to really start quickly start exploring what it's like to use your movement in this case with Gliss um, to control sounds and sound effects um, because you can um, you can try so many different sounds and the these um, these parameters uh, tend to change a little bit so like the effect of your movements is not exactly the same with each sound which makes it really fun so this is how you just use, use a preset, but you might want to make uh, your own mappings. Well, um, there's two ways to go about this. Um, first, you can just use the MIDI config that's already here. I'll show you um, where you can see it. I'm just going to mute Glover here. So uh, when we go into this MIDI configuration setting, we don't accidentally uh, map any of these continuous um, uh, mapping. So I'm going to click the global mute button here. And then uh, to see the MIDI configuration, you go to settings in your, or, or this kind of settings icon here in uh, Analog Lab. And then um, when you go to MIDI, we can see that it's loaded this Glover MIDI configuration for Analog Lab 5, it says here. <laughs> it just fell off the screen. Um, and uh, you can see that it has a list of mappings here and that all of these uh, parameters are red. If they wouldn't be mapped, they'd be purple. Um, so uh, these are the mappings. So you could write them down and like remember that um, MIDI channel 1 and 20 is previous preset, etc. But I have also provided you with a preset that is called Analog Lab 5. Um, configure well, this is also falling off the screen. <laughs> Woo. Config mappings. Um, so please note this preset won't make any sound. It just has the mapping outputs that pair up with the MIDI configuration um, that I just showed you. So um, you can load this preset. And then um, like the description said, it only opens a bunch of uh, mapping outputs um, that you can then copy to um, to a new to new scenes, or you can just adjust this scene um, to if you want to um, make different controls for these effects. Um, so let's copy um, let's copy the modulation wheel and um, what should we go do? Well, let's just go with brightness again because it's easy to hear. I'm just going to do Command C or, yeah, Command C and then uh, make a new scene. Our own analog lab mappings. And Command V. And now we have these mappings here. Um, and now we can uh, decide how we want to control this. And um, maybe I want to use, yeah, let's use the gestures page. Um, we can find and then find the, the displacement um, on the screen. So I'm, I want to use the X, swipe X. Um, so you have to, in Glover, be on the gestures page and then uh, kind of swipe to your right or to your left. If you haven't used the gestures page, page yet, um, please find the tutorial on how to use this and train your postures in them. 
it's only a short video. So now uh, to control this, I just connect this swipe to the modulation mapping and I have to unmute Glover. So now this is the modulation wheel, I believe. So now if I do a swipe X, you should see this move because we're still in that same MIDI configuration. So these mappings will just work. Well, now we can't hear its effect because this scene doesn't have any chords or notes in it. So let's just quickly uh, do a chord machine. And use a posture one for the, that chord. Well, this, so this uh, sound doesn't actually have a lot going on on this modulation wheel. Um, so let's find a different sound. Here you can hear it a little bit. Now let's also control the brightness um, with, um, with the pitch. So now I'm pointing my phone all, with the top of the phone all the way down and now I'm pointing it all the way up. Let's connect that to brightness. So now I'm con this brightness is being controlled. So it's these um, this preset scene with the configurations to to make your own con movement connections to these parameters so I'm now going to show you how to make your own mappings um, inside analog lab and so let's go make a new scene again completely oh new MIDI config. <laughs> um, so uh, let's get into this MIDI mapping. Our MIDI. And here we have our Glover MIDI config, but let's make an empty one. So you see that now all these parameters are purple, so they can all uh, be mapped anew. What I, th I think is the safest way to do this is to start doing this just with mapping outputs without um, using the mapping inputs because that way you have a little bit more control. So um, I'm going to make a MIDI mapping output and I'm going to choose a very different number from what I was using before. So I'm going to let's say we wanted to use CC number 100 and um, or 102. And then um, I'm going I'm going to use or put that on on the brightness. So I'm going to click the brightness and then you see that it's uh, selected ready to be mapped. And now from Glover, I can do two things. I can uh, temporarily make it into initializer because that uh, gives me the option to send the value but I can also do command shift and double click on this MIDI icon here and then it will send um, that message as well so now that uh, brightness is mapped so that's cool always good to do some admin because otherwise you might forget what you actually have mapped. So now let's do another one, MIDI mapping and then choose, oh, I don't know, just some random number to control the reverb. And then now we go into analog lab, click reverb, it's ready to go. And then we do command shift, double click on the MIDI and now we have that. Okay, so let's go with this for now. Um, so let's get out of this MIDI mapping mode and attach some um, inputs. So let's go with the roll 
oh, roll for the brightness. And let's go with the yo for the reverb. So as I now roll, you can see I'm controlling the brightness parameter. And when I'm moving along the your axis, you can see it's changing the amount of reverb. We don't actually have any notes or chords in this scene, so you can't really hear the effect, but you can see that the parameters are changing. 